Hi, we are here again for our class, Chemistry 100B. Today, we will open a new chapter that is on measurement. Do you think measurement is important in chemistry and in other fields of sciences like physics and biology? If your answer is yes, then you are right. It is because the chemists do not just grab any amount of chemicals in order to make a mixture. Neither a chemist would just pick an uncertain amount of chemicals in order to make a chemical reaction. So we can say that measurement is really important in chemistry. What then is measurement? If you're going to define it, measurement is a scientific comparison between the object to be measured and a standard. Now, what are these referred to standards? If you're going to take the measurement of your height, what will you do? Isn't it you're going to stand in front of a height scale and say, I stand five feet and three inches tall. If you want to know your weight, isn't it? You will go to the weighing scale and then you will say, I weigh 150 pounds. And if you want to know the time, then you're going to look at your watch and say, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. And if you want to know your body temperature, you're going to get a thermometer and then you will say, my body temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. And that's the normal body temperature. And if you want to know the measurement of your waistline, then you will get a tape measure to know your waistline. The weighing scale, the height scale, the watch or the clock, and the tape measure are the instruments which can serve as standards of measure. There are two groups of quantities that we're going to measure. One, the fundamental quantities, which are the length or distance, the time, the mass or weight, and the temperature. And the second group is the derived quantities, which are the volume, the density, the specific gravity, and calorimetry. Let's go back to the fundamental quantities. First, which is length. Now the length is a one-dimensional measurement in which this is usually associated with distance, height, width, or thickness. The common instruments which are used in taking the measure of length are the ruler, the meter stick, the carpenter's tape, the tape measure, and the yardstick. And the units used to express the measure of length are of two groups. One, we have the metric system, and the other one, the English system. I have prepared for you a table on the metric system as well as the English system conversion units. So you can browse this table on the units of measurement for length in your Google Classroom. But to mention some of the common units used to express length in the metric system, they are 
the micrometer, the millimeter, the centimeter, the meter, and the kilometer. Of uh, these five common units used to express the length in the metric system, it is the meter which serve as the standard unit for length. In the English system, the units used to express length are inches, feet, yard, rod, and mile. I have also there in our electronic notes the conversion factors between one unit in the metric system to the units in the English system for an enter conversion between the metric and the English units. Let us have some examples on how to take a measure of lengths. For example, if I have this problem, the distance between Holy Name University and St. Joseph's Cathedral is approximately 1.2 kilometers. How many miles is this? We are given here that the distance between Holy Name University and St. Joseph's Cathedral is 1.2 kilometers. And we are asked to express this unit of kilometers to miles. So, in order for us to convert the unit kilometer to miles, we have to multiply the number of kilometers by the conversion factor which is 1 mile is to 1.61 kilometers. So your equation will be number of miles equals 1.2 kilometers times 1 mile over 1.61 kilometers so you can cancel out the unit kilometers and the remaining unit will be miles so your answer is number of miles equals 0.74 miles or it is equal to 7400 mile the second problem which is the height of the flagpole is approximately 35 feet how many meters is the flagpole so we are given here that the height of the flagpole is 35 feet and we are asked to get the number of meters of the flagpole we are required to express the height of the flagpole in terms of meters so in order to get the number of meters the equation is number of meters equals 35 feet times the conversion factor between feet and meters is that there are 3.28 feet in 1 meter. So the conversion factor that we're going to use is 1 meter over 3.28 feet. So that you can cancel out the feet unit. So your equation will become number of meters equals 35 times 1 over 3.28 or 35 over 3.28 and the answer is the number of meters is 10.67 meters 
The second quantity to be measured is the mass. Now, the mass and weight are two terms which can be used interchangeably. However, to the strictest sense of the word, the mass is different from the weight. If we're going to define mass, mass is the quantity of matter in a particular sample of matter, while weight is the gravitational force of attraction between the object to be measured and the planet. Mass is constant, while weight is variable, or it changes. Just like when your mass here on Earth is 120 pounds, then when you go to the moon, it is still 120 pounds. But if your weight here on Earth is 120 pounds, when you go to the moon, your weight will become only one-sixth that of the Earth. So what is one-sixth of 120? So 120 divided by 6, you will only be weighing 20 pounds. That's why if you saw that movie, The Man on the Moon, those astronauts that walked on the surface of the moon seem to be floating on the surface of the moon because there is less gravity or less gravitational attraction between the object and the moon. The common instruments used to get the weight or measure the weight are the weighing scale. When we go to the chemistry laboratory, you can find there three different kinds of balance. We have the triple beam balance, we have the analytical balance, we have also the top loading balance. But the most common balance that we're going to use is the triple beam balance. The common units used to express mass are the following. We have the microgram, the milligram, the grams, and the kilograms. Of these four common units to express mass, it is the gram which serve as the standard unit. Take note that the other units for mass, like milligrams, micrograms, kilograms, there are prefixes. Note the prefixes. These are micro, milli, and kilo. Okay, so when we say micro, this denotes that the number of grams is equivalent to 1 times 10 to the negative 6. When we say milligram, it is 1 times 10 to the negative 3. But when we say kilogram, it is 1 times 10 to the positive 3. In the English system, the common units used to express mass are drums, onches, pounds, and ton. I have also prepared for you a table for the conversion factors of the metric system to the English system. Refer to our e-notes which you can find in the Google Classroom. So let's have some examples for the determination of mass. Example number one. The antibiotic capsule weighs five milligrams. How many grams is this? Now, we are given in a problem that the mass of the antibiotic is 5 milligrams. And then we are asked to express this mass in terms of grams. So what shall we do? Now we know that the conversion factor of milligrams to gram is that 1 gram equals 1000 milligrams. So 
the given 5 milligrams will be multiplied by the factor 1 gram over 1,000 milligrams so that you can cancel out the milligram unit leaving the gram unit. So when you multiply 5 milligrams times 1 divided by 1,000, this will give you the answer number of grams equals 5,000 gram. The second problem, which is heavier? So for the solution, we are given here that the mass of the salt is 10 ounces, while the mass of the sugar is 150 grams. Now we are asked which of these two substances is heavier. Now comparing their masses, you cannot compare them unless they have the same units. So we need to convert one unit to the other, whichever you feel comfortable converting. Say for example, you may convert the ounces to gram or you may convert the grams to ounces. Now, if you prefer to convert the ounces to grams, you have the conversion factor from ounces to pounds, then pounds to grams. So the equation will be like this. Number of grams equals 10 ounces times 1 pound divided by 16 ounces times 454 grams per pound. So you can cancel out the ounces unit leaving behind the pounds and that pound unit can be canceled with the 454 grams per pound. So leaving behind the gram unit. Therefore, your final answer is 283.75 grams of salt. Comparing the 283.75 grams of salt to 150 grams of sugar, the 283 0.75 grams of salt is heavier than 150 grams of sugar. Therefore, the 10 ounces salt is heavier than the 150 gram sugar. After listening to this lecture on the length and the mass, I'm going to give you a short exercise. I'll be sending this exercise through the Google Stream. Please submit your output or your work before our class ends today. And for the next meeting, I want you to read about temperature and time. And I have also questions to, to be given to you and kindly read it through the Google stream. And that would be all for today. This is your teacher, Professor Nisitas Ruiz, here at Holy Name University.